hello coming at you all rough and raw <laughs> i usually try to get pretty cute for these i'm not gonna lie but today it's just not happening because it is a travel day and we just got to our new place got this beautiful view behind me snow-capped mountains over there and just really loving it and like taking it all in so for today's sunday scaries I am going to be talking about the fear of the fear of somebody you love getting hurt. So I did something a little bit different for the poll this week because, you know, we've been covering a lot of like the big ones and the, the common ones like fear of failure and fear of rejection, those kinds of things. But I want to get deeper because I think that fear comes up in our lives in so many ways where we don't even really we don't really know that it's fear that is like that's doing it to us so um fear of someone we love getting hurt i keep seeing the universe keeps putting me in these situations as witness to see how people project their own fear onto other people, onto people they love because they are scared of the person getting hurt. So I'm seeing this a lot with kids specifically and their parents or grandparents. And listen, I do not have kids, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know what it is like to raise a child. But all I want to do is just share the stories and my observations of them. And, you know, we can kind of come to a, an agreement together. And I would love to hear any input from other parents because I can see where this is like the biggest and most common situation um, of of doing that and then just kind of talking about like the potential effects on the child as they get older being somebody who was a child of very worried parents so let me start with the stories and then I'll kind of get into my thoughts around it so the first one was uh, pretty recently we were hiking in the campground and a grandfather and his grandson came up um, they were riding like dune buggies or ATVs or whatever the little kid wanted to see the view but there was a tree line so he had to get up on a table and look he said to his grandfather oh I'm scared of heights like come up with me excuse me and grandpa was like oh don't don't be scared of anything those were his words so he lifts the guy up, the little kid up on his shoulders and the kid couldn't see. So the kid gets down and right in front of us there was like a, uh, um, it was just like some grassland, not really tall trees, but like little bushes. And so the kid starts walking towards that and grandpa says to us, uh, like, I don't know, you could just kind of, I got the feeling that grandpa didn't want to be there. He was there to show the kid and he was ready to, to go right back home. So he's telling us, oh yeah, that kid, he's, he's the wild one. He's always exploring. And so the kid is kind of inching towards the bushes. And grandpa was like, grandpa said to us, you know, I don't want to go in there or something along those lines. And then yells at the kid, hey, don't go, don't go in there. There's snakes, there's, uh, there's bears. Like he used the fear as like a deterrent for the kid right and yes there could have been snakes there could have been bears uh maybe um but the the point like the kid looked very confused after that because grandpa just said don't be scared of anything and now he's telling me to be careful of, of you know it's, he's telling me it's scary if i go in here and the expression on the kid's face i think was just confusion like he was kind of looking around and he was maybe eight, nine, ten, like not a super, super little kid. So old enough to understand, like, okay, be, be wary of snakes and whatever. So I thought that was interesting. Another example was another time we were hiking and we were getting ready to go. We were passing a, a father and his, and his kid. We were going through a trail and the kid says, oh, be careful, there's snake. The kid tells us there's a snake over there. So, you know, we're going the other way. And the dad said, we're going the other way. So we kept walking and we were on our look on the lookout for the snake. We ended up seeing him in the corner and we kind of hugged the right and, and kept walking. So I think of that one from the kid's perspective where my dad, the adult that I trust is telling me, we have to turn another way because there's danger there. And now I see two other people going right into it. Like, I wonder, I don't think kids are, I think, I think kids are so much more observant and 
and smart than people may think at, at one point. I don't know. I, I trusted this kid's, like his, de, his, de, his, um, what's the word? Not deterrence. Uh, I can't, what is the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. It'll come to me, but discernment, you know, like what, what could he have thought about that particular situation? And was it the kid that was scared? Like, did they approach the snake together? The kid saw it, freaked out, and dad was like, okay, let's go. Or was it dad's fear that said, hold on, let's go. So Cody and I talked about it, and I said, you know, that's interesting to me because you're teaching the kid to run. And Cody said, well, I probably would have done the same thing. Like, I would have gone a different way to protect my kid, of course. But what I just find interesting is, like, kids... They have to be, like, fear is, is taught, fear is learned, fear is conditioned. So I think little situations like that all build up over time, add up, and eventually the kid has its own, you know, the kid who grows into an adult has their own um, experiences and judgments, but they're all based on little pieces of here and there, what they got from other people's fear. So I'm not saying let your kids run into a snake, of course not, but I'm just curious, like I w would have loved to have seen whose fear it was that made them end up turning around. Because what I'm finding is that the adult projects their fear onto the kid. And there was another situation, I was at the pool, there was a little kid playing in the hot tub and he had little swimmies on. So the kid got out and I guess, I couldn't see, I wasn't looking, but I could hear, like I just heard what was going on. And the kid, I guess, went back into the water without his floaties. And I just all of a sudden heard his grandfather like flipping out. Like, oh, come here. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Now the kid starts screaming, crying. Kid's like, what? What? Then the grandpa says, you can't go into there without your, your floaties. You'll drown. Like that was, <laughs> you're going to drown. Again, adult projecting their fear. And then grandma stepped in. It was like, it's okay. Calm down. Like, I think what the, what the, um, where the gap may be is explaining to the kid. Now, again, I don't have kids, so I'm sure it's very difficult to tell an, a toddler, like, this is why you should be scared of this. But I have to think that there's some kind of way that we can get that message across without using fear as a, um, first of all, as a, as a like manipulative tactic to not, to entice the kid to not do what you want, don't want them to do. Um, and, uh, like, how can we teach? I'm sure you can, you can find the words or the motion or something to be able to convey to a child that they don't want to get themselves into this situation. Not because I don't want you to, or because you're in trouble, because that's what it goes to, trouble. I feel like, um, you know, again, my parents were very protective and they were warriors and they wanted me to be very cautionary. Like they prepared me to go out into the world and be very cautious of everything and everybody. So I think the way that that affected me was like, I was just on the extreme of it. I wasn't really like, take it with a grain of salt and decide for yourself kind of thing. I was just like, well, everybody in my life has told me that this is dangerous. So I'm not going to go anywhere near that. And if I do, I'm going to be freaking terrified of it. Um, I'm gonna move into the sun a little bit because I am getting chilly. So those are just kind of my observations with it. And I know that I project my own fear, even though I don't have kids, I obviously have people that I love. And like Cody, my boyfriend is very much a, a daredevil type of kid. <laughs> and he was as a child too. He didn't have his, um, his parents were, very much like like learn and find out for yourself what is dangerous and what isn't because you'll know when you either get hurt or you just you learn on your own and so he is much more of a daredevil than I am and when I see him doing something that I think is like sketchy or scary my immediate result is like oh be careful be careful like so now I get into his head. Now he's saying to himself, oh, be careful. Now he's doubting himself. Now every move he makes, instead of making it confidently, he's making it with this worried voice in his mind, mine. Whereas something I've been practicing with him actually is to tell him like, like you got this, you got it. And then when I hear those types of words, instead of be careful, I feel powerful. I feel like, okay, I can handle this. I'm strong. 
of course I'm going to be careful because I don't want to break anything or die but I don't have to lead with that worry like I would rather lead with strength and power and confidence because I think that's my best shot at surviving something opposed to being being scared when you're scared something else takes over physically like it's a chemical reaction you can't think you're you go from logic brain to amygdala brain which is fear brain so the only thing you're worried about is not rational thought it's not problem solving it's like it's either i'm gonna fight or i'm gonna flight or i'm gonna freeze like whatever your fear response is and you get tight and then it's physical now instead of you know take like taking strong steps you're taking weak ones you're taking scary trembly ones because everything is just like being prepped for fear but in situations where it's not necessary like okay yes obviously if there's a snake and your child is walking near it that warrants it like i i i can under, i can recognize that especially after hearing cody who is the more daredevil one and less afraid of of things like to hear him say he probably would have done the same thing it made me think like okay there's definitely a line obviously in situations like that and if you have to yell and and do that to protect like of course but i'm just curious how that comes up in other how we project our own fears onto other people how that comes up in other situations non-life-threatening and the effects that it has on a person's confidence on a person's trust in themselves and their ability to do things that scare them most people don't because we've been told not to we've been told anything that is scary and uncertain or uncomfortable is dangerous it's wrong it's bad avoid avoid it but what I'm finding as I keep doing things that scare me keep doing risky things like that's not true and I've only built the confidence that I have by doing the things that scare me because otherwise everything's just easy and comfortable and you go through the motions and you know life is fine but this is so much better I mean like to come and stay at a person's house that I have I don't know who they are um, I am in a place I've never been before like that is scary there are potential risks of that that could be very sketchy of course but I took the chance anyway I met lovely people I'm in this beautiful place with no one else around like totally private seeing a view that I wouldn't see otherwise so like there's so much potential like as many worst case scenarios as there are there are equal or more best case scenarios and if we don't give ourselves that chance to experience that, then we, we, we give those limits to other people too. We, we expect that nobody can experience that. And, and that's all we know. So it's really to no fault of any, but you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just, it's just the human conditioning. It's just what we do. People, we're scared. We are a scared society. <laughs> and we, I think when it comes to people that we love, we want to protect them. We want to keep them safe. I know my parents just, you know, wanted me to stay in this. Like I was like their, their precious little pearl that they wanted to keep safe and perfect and don't let the cruel world get to you. Like I 1000% understand that and empathize with it. And I'm grateful for it. It's just, I think that there is an opportunity for us to recognize when we do that to ourselves and let our kids, our partners, our loved ones kind of make those decisions for themselves and not let them limit themselves in ways that like we feel are true for us, if that makes sense. So I don't know. Those are kind of my thoughts. Again, I just keep seeing this situation where I'm seeing like, I guess because I'm my focus is so heavily on fear, I'm looking for it everywhere or I'm just I'm just seeing it. And the biggest thing is is with kids and adults projecting their fear like these kids are going to grow up scared i think maybe you know i think like the wild one that i was talking about at the beginning of this like he might think there's something wrong with him now because he likes to explore he likes to venture he's not scared and i don't think i was either i think my fears were always somebody else's never my own i like risky i like challenges and showing myself that i can do hard things so those are my thoughts those are sunday scaries i would love to hear what you have to what you think what came up have a beautiful sunday